Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to attempt to tackle fixing the VTS on this 1996 SeaDoo GSX using the 451M from DEI Relay. Stick around, we'll see what happens. All right, let me show you what's going on. On the CDU VTSs, this thing here is what usually goes out. In this box right here. That box has the uh, ever so popular blue and green wires coming out of it that go into the trim motor. Sometimes this trim motor goes bad. You can change this out. I think the trim motor is probably right about now, here mid to late 2022. It's probably uh, pushing 100 bucks, I suppose, uh, for something like this. But more often times than not, it's the electronics that go inside of this thing here. The idea behind this is to wire it into the system to where you're going to bypass the green and blue wire that goes into the electronics on here. So this is going to replace this. Before we get too carried away by putting this into the system, and maybe it still won't work, uh, let's do some troubleshooting first before we get too carried away here. First thing I want to attack is I want to make sure that I don't have a bad switch, trim switch, VTS switch, somewhere along the line. Or maybe I got a bad connection. Pretty slim chances of that happening, but I want to rule that out before I take the time to put that 451M in there. Here's where I start. So I start at the VTS trim button, and I just took this apart just for uh, so we can see it a little easier. We got th there's two different switches that operate the trim. So you got this white button right here that's trimmed down, and then where the blue wire goes into that's trim up. So there's two different switches inside of there uh, to trim down and trim up. The blue wire trims up, green wire trims down. Since I know that those color wires, I went through and traced the whole wiring system all the way back to all the way back to here so here are the three wires for the trim blue is trim up get a better grip on this black is the neutral and green is the trim down so how I tested this is I would put uh, I took my ohmmeter and I put one lead in the blue terminal here and then the other lead in the black terminal inside of there and then I proceeded to hit my trim up button and when I did that my ohmmeter went to zero ohms instead of open circuit then I took the uh, I left the neutral in the middle where the black wire goes in and then I put the lead the other lead in the green socket here and then went up to the button push the trim down and then it closed that circuit and my resistance went back to zero. So I know that my switch is good and my wiring all the way back to here was good. So on the other side of this connection, on this connector right here, I ran a lead from this pin on the green wire here and I ran the other lead to this green wire here and it was an open circuit same thing here I ran a lead from this blue wire here to the blue wire connection there and it was an open circuit I'm electrical idi idiot so I really don't understand how to explain it better but that was pretty much telling me that this thing was bad right off the bat uh, I know my wiring's good but this was not good uh, I know my motor is good because I have taken this thing and hooked it up to a battery and it spins just fine so I know it's not not my motor I know it's not my wiring, I'm pretty sure it's that VTS module in there. Now I realize I didn't have to take this that far apart to, to do this job. Uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that kind of describe how to put the 451M relay into here. The other YouTube videos that are out there, I don't think they do a very good job of really elaborating that there could be something else wrong. Yeah, it's pretty uh, obvious that it's going to be that VTS module, sometimes the motors go bad. Extremely rare that the switch is gonna go bad up here. Um, but it's stuff that I wanted to show you that nobody else, I didn't see any other videos that tackled that kind of stuff. So that's why I took this thing apart a little bit more just to help show you what's going on. 
because when it comes to electrical stuff, I don't know what I'm doing a lot of times. But one bummer about this relay system though is you will lose the electronic stops. So as this, uh, so this is what uh, goes out to your trim nozzle. As this worm gear turns from through using the motor, that worm gear in turn moves this back and forth. But the bummer about this is you're, we are gonna override, I believe, I'm, I'm, I believe there's a, a magnet inside of here. But I think this is like a magnetic pickup sensor or something like that. And I'm gonna think that along that slot right there where that sensor rides, there's probably electrical stop of some sort. So as this thing, trim, trim goes up and down, there's something in here that meters that to tell it to stop and to stop. With this 451M relay, you lose the CDU's ability to stop the trim from going full up and full down. Once it gets full down, it's gonna keep on trying to go. Something's gotta give, whether it's the worm gear or a fuse or the trim motor or what, I don't know the answer to that. I do know that we lose this function of having a soft stop in the trim itself. So on this particular 1996 GSX, all my wires are good to this point here. It's the connection from this point to this point that's bad. It's between here and right here where it comes out. Since I have all the wires here I need, green is trim down, black is ground, blue is trim up, purple is power. And I'm not sure what the browns are, but I don't think I need them. So anyway, I think if I tap into this, that's all I need to do, my trim will work fine. So I'm gonna unplug this thing, and I'm just gonna stick some probes in here. Here we go. Just stick some probes in the appropriate, play, appropriate place, hook my wires up off of this thing. I might even just stick the wires into the, into the female parts of the connector there and see if I can get my trim to work that way. So we'll give that a look. Okay, here's what I got figured out so far. So here's my relay, purple and red. I'll go to my positive terminal on my battery, white and brown. Down here. I have this plugged into the, the it's supposed to be a, a ground but I had I couldn't get it to work when I had it hooked it up to ground. I have this hooked up to the black wire, which is a ground uh, from the switch on my VTS switch. The green is whatever trim up, trim down, and the blue is trim up, trim down, vice the opposite. And then the black wire in the middle is the ground. I couldn't get this to work when I just hooked it up to the battery, straight to the battery. But when I plugged the wires into that ground and then grounded it, ground it, now it works. Uh, it's backwards. I mean, the trim up is trim up on my switch is is trimming it down, but trim down on the switch is trimming it up. Green hooked up to the green in my wiring harness here, the small green. Uh, the small blue is hooked up to the blue in my wiring harness. The big green to get this working the right way the big green is hooked up to the blue on my trim motor and the big blue is hooked up in my green on the trim motor so I might be doing something wrong there I'm not sure what the way this is hooked up my meter on the gauge cluster doesn't work and that's what those brown wires do the two brown wires is a brown black stripe and brown white stripe that is the limit switch for the magnetic pickup sensor uh, inside of the VTS housing so now since I have this unplugged I don't have I'm not getting any signal from my sensor back up to my gauge that tells me where my VTS uh, where my nozzle is at so that in order to be able to read that correctly I'm gonna have to keep those wires plugged together or keep that plugged in and just tap into these wires here I guess I can keep that all plugged in 
and just snip the wires snip all these wires and uh, run the relay wires off of this and I think it should work okay right now this is hooked up where like like everybody does they hooked it right directly to the battery I don't want it hooked directly to the battery I want this to be able to only work when the engine is running which I think I can use this purple wire on the wiring harness I don't think there's any power to it. I haven't checked it, but I don't think there's any power to it right now. But when I start the motor, then I think I have power to it. So that's where I'm at with this thing. Uh, I'm going to plug that back in together, and then I am going to start snipping some wires here. I might just do scotch locks for a temporary thing. Once I get it working like I want to, then I'll go ahead and start cutting wires. All right, I just got this hooked up somewhat temporary now. I, um, I made sure I got this plugged in. I want to keep those brown wires hooked up that will keep I, I was under the impression that if I keep those brown wires connected and I have power going to them then my gauge will work on the dash so I uh, spliced into the wires here uh, the blue trigger wire is hooked I just used the scotch lock for a temporary thing to scotch lock that together I scotch locked the green uh, signal wire to the green wire here and then I tapped into the black and I have both the brown and the white plugged into the black for the ground. Uh, I plugged in the um, green, big green wire to the blue and the big blue wire to the green. Uh, this is the only way that I can get this to work on the switch correctly. If I trim up, the trim goes up. If I trim down, the trim goes down. If I were put these blue to blue and black uh, green to green, it's backwards for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I guess I don't need this wire anymore. This is my alligator clip for the ground. I don't need that anymore because I got that over there. So now that I got that plugged in, I still have my brown wires hooked up. And this is what I was trying to accomplish here. It's plugged in. And now I'm going to trim up trim down so now my gauge works because I have those brown wires hooked up trim down. Trimmed up. Yep. I want to figure out if that purple wire because this is hot all the time. That purple wire only has power going to it when I turn the motor on. If it does, then I am going to hook it up to that purple wire in here. All right, so I got that temporarily hooked up, the purple wire. Then I took my purple and red, small red, off of the relay, and I plugged them into that. So now I have no alligator clips whatsoever hooked up to either the positive or the negative on the battery. So it's all run through just the wiring harness right here. So let's see what happens here. All right, we'll go ahead and hit the power button. Power comes on. Trim's moving. So the trim's moved down. down. I won't be able to make it down there. Trim it up. Now she's trimmed up. The power's off. And nothing happens up here. So that is exactly what I was hoping would happen. That I could just tap into that menagerie right there keep my brown wires hooked up so that magnet magnetic sensor inside of the housing will still do its job and I can have a gauge on the dash to know where my trim level is at it doesn't bypass it so I know it works and I am gonna tear all this out now and wire it up in a much more clean fashion something a little bit more durable than this fragile way to do it
All right, about ready to try this out one more time. I messed up a little bit, I think. Uh, I had to hook this up twice. And what I did wrong was didn't I didn't realize that, uh, it's kind of hard to see right here, but the, the, I just left the brown wires hooked up in that wiring harness and I cut all the rest of them and spliced into uh, the relay. But what I didn't think about is the brown wires need power to be able to register the location of the trim. So I still need a power wire and a ground wire to go back to this thing just to let me know where the trim is at, uh, I believe. So I ended up, I got it all hooked up, tried it with the motor on, and it didn't work. And then, so I'm, that's my conclusion is I think I still need to have power and a ground go back to that thing. So let's try it one more time and see what happens now. Got it. All right, so that was it. I only needed to cut the blue wire and the green wire, the signal wires, to go to the trim motor. That's where I messed up. But got it right now, so we're gonna throw the heat gun at it, get everything sealed up, we are done. This is something new that I have not used before. Liquid tape, brush on electrical insulation. So I'm gonna give this stuff a whirl and see what happens here. This is how I'm gonna seal up. Seal up this relay. Man, I got a cold. So I got that slathered on. I'm just gonna let this sit for a few hours, come back out and put another coat on. Let's get in between all these wires if I can help it. And then I'm just gonna take a zip tie and hang this thing from, from up in here somewhere. So that is all I'm gonna do for the time being. I do have some wires cut here, I better, I don't, don't think there's any power going to them or any difference if they, hit anything but I don't want them to ground out anything else all right so we'll throw a little bit of goop on them things to kind of protect them we'll come back out in a couple hours throw another coat on there or maybe maybe even two more coats later tonight and then we'll button it up take it for a test ride tomorrow all right, ladies and gents, here we go. It's a super windy day. We're gonna give the GSX a little bit of a test ride today. I changed spark plugs, clean the rave valves, and then also fix the trim so the trim system works now. We are gonna take it out for a couple spins around the lake. The water's rough, so we aren't gonna get top speed runs. Uh, unless I go, maybe go way over to the other side of the lake over there, uh, find some smooth stuff. Anyway, we're gonna take this thing for a ride. 
see how the trim works which with this, this rough water it's gonna be great to be able to trim it down uh, in the rough water and then once we get over to the other side and get in smooth water we'll trim it back up and and see what the rpms change at all i was only running about 62 6300 before uh, when i was topped out and uh, that's way too low she needs to be 67 68 at least on the top end so i was telling me my spark plugs are getting fouled or uh, my ray valves are getting clogged or something so i uh, went through did a quick maintenance deal uh, on all that stuff and uh, with the trim fixed now we should be able to get some good runs on it so let's see what happens Take some more trips across the white caps, I should say. See what happens. works like it's supposed to the thing runs about uh, 400 rpm more than it did before i changed the spark plugs and cleaned the ray valve so my little tune-up did what it was supposed to do you see how rough it is out here and uh, on the lake today is really windy the uh clouds we got coming in there that's hurricane ian whatever it's called that uh hit florida really bad and then it went across florida into south carolina um now it's uh, coming into georgia and maybe skirting just a little bit of the Tennessee too so I'm gonna get loaded up and call it a big deal all right everybody thanks for watching make sure you uh, like comment subscribe share all that good stuff and uh, until next time talk to you later